Prince Harry's drug use was one of many bombshells he dropped in his biography. So we're asking, was it wise of him to be so candid about his past? Or should he left those skeletons firmly in the cupboard? We're now joined by a royal commentator, Richard Fitzwilliam, who says Harry should not be sharing this information and should keep his skeletons tucked away. And Newsweek's chief royal correspondent, Jack Royston, who says Harry's uh, honesty about his past seems to be therapeutic for him and he's entitled to share it. So, who wants to go first hmm. before we are I did to go <laughs> first because when it comes to therapy, well, let's be honest, Harry is in therapy and there's been great tragedy in his past. I wouldn't for a scintilla of a second challenge that. But Spare should never have been written, in my opinion. The Duke of Windsor took 15 years before his memoir came out. He was monetizing it and it's also a threat to the royal family. It's meant his ratings plummet in America. And what are people doing? Often they're laughing because of some of the extraordinary things. Take penile frostbite, where on Stephen Colbert's interview, he actually, I timed this, he discussed penile frostbite and its effects for five minutes of screen time, where Afghanistan, where in fact yeah. he admitted uh, shooting... We've probably talked about it for too I long mean, already this morning. To be honest, yeah, for <laughs> people it's... watching, but I remember it made your eyes of water course, at the all, time, and it was a but, shocker. But interestingly, though, Richard, I think it, it, with some circumstances, that, for me, I, I found fascinating as, you know, somebody who likes doing challenges, the idea that these, these, these people that go to the, to the Arctic or wherever they're going could be affected in such an extreme way. And that he was honest about that. I didn't feel like that was something that he should hide. Well, again, if you add to that the issue of the drugs and the fact that he uses trauma guru, Dr Gabor Mata, who has very, very controversial views on this, he... If you listen to that part of the interview, you see him imply that certain drugs might be very beneficial. He knows that there are a lot of people who can't stand him. And this is one raises a very significant point. Who on earth is advising him? Because losing his virginity at the back of the pub in the field... Mm. I mean, people have been corpsing on television. This mm. is but South Richard, Park. It's this... absolutely perfect for South Park. The worldwide privacy talk. <laughs> but, Richard, this is ridiculous. If you don't want him to say the stuff about family members, then what do you want him to talk about? The guy's signed up to do a multi-million pound tell-all memoir. He's got to give them something. Talking about drugs doesn't hurt other people, and it's fine for us to have a debate about the counter-argument. It's absolutely fine to have a debate about the counter-argument, which is that psychedelic drugs can go terribly wrong for some people. But this is the guy's life story, and he's being honest, so why shouldn't he just come out and say this? If you were going to give me a copy of Spare and a Tipex pen, there is stuff that I would take out that book because it hurts other people. But the stuff about drugs, Harry is only talking about himself, and that is a story... But it might hurt him now, though, because of this uh, group that wants to campaign. You know, there are really, really strict visa issues going into America that potentially... There's a lawyer who's turned around and said potentially there's grounds for them to revoke his visa. And partly this depends on what kind of a visa he's on. Sure. Because we, we don't actually know what... We've never known what kind of a visa he's on. It is very unlikely that they will enforce unless he is in some other way arrested or charged with a criminal But offense. undoubtedly, but, but... one of the problems... I mean, a serious problem here. He knows there's a lot of enemies. He knows this is going to stir up a lot of trouble. What image do they want? This is the thing I'm wondering. What on earth is giving him advice? What advice is he taking? Admitting the number of Taliban insurgents he personally shot in the second tour of duty in Afghanistan, that was grossly responsible for someone who naturally, for obvious reasons, is so concerned about security. Look at the cases bringing against the Home Office. I suppose what we're, what we're debating here this morning, because the book and its repercussions we've talked about a lot, is really whether it's right for any individual, including Harry, to bring those skeletons out. And I guess it depends on what his motivation for doing it was. If it was just to clear the air for himself, never mind the personal repercussions, he's done it. But do you wonder if he's clear about those repercussions for him? I think there's a lot that Harry probably isn't totally clear on, and you can see that from the reaction that the book got, which is it did get a very negative reaction. However, the negative reaction to Spare was not, in my view, predominantly triggered by the conversation about drugs. Mm. It was predominantly triggered by other things. From Harry's point of view, you know, a lot of people in society are not in a position to come out and have a candid conversation about the pros and cons of drugs, and there are many cons. 
Um, but there is also peer-reviewed academic research which shows that some drugs can have a therapeutic quality to them. Now, I'm not here to tell you whether that's right or wrong. I have not done that research for a start. <laughs> it's not my research. No. Um, but there is a debate. There's a legitimate debate to be had there. And Harry is a rare person on planet Earth who has enough insulation, because partly of his privilege, he has enough insulation that he can have that conversation. But One of his arguments... Problem. He loathes his privilege. Just the thing, he believes the royals are trapped. And as you were saying yourself, there's a lot of very controversial material in Spare. But it's what I object to so strongly. And this comes in also to the argument about should skeletons remain in the mm. cupboard or mm. not. He's using... Mon first, he's monetizing his life, as they're doing with their Netflix, with their Spotify, and with the Random House. There are three more books, reportedly, in this, agree in this uh, arrangement. Megan's memoir, perhaps? What about the 800 pages Spare originally ran to? There's another 400 there, and then there's the previous life he had uh, before the tragic death of Diana. Mm. The possibility of three more books. All of this is being used to threaten the royal family and what they want... They want admission that they were badly treated uh, when they were senior working royals and they yeah. want an apology and they're not going to get it and they shouldn't. Uh, I'd say, so we've had a few on either side of this debate. Mm. Karen says, yes, keep the skeletons in the cupboard. We need to keep that stiff up her lip. Keep your opinions and feelings to yourself. Whereas Jordan says, skeletons should not stay in the cupboard. We need to live in an open and honest world. That includes the honest truth. It may be detrimental to one's own case, but it's worth sharing. I think you sort of, you know, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because you've certainly uh, been very content to share quite a lot and intimate detail as well, Bridget, as you uh, very carefully uh, illustrated earlier on. Uh, <laughs> One does wonder how it'll all play out, but good to talk to both of you this morning.